Welcome back to Super Talk Outdoors. Uh, real, I really enjoyed that conversation with Lake Pickle and Jordan Bliss. I'm glad to have them as regular regular guests on this show. Listen, are you looking to uh, purchase the perfect piece of hunting property or upgrade your farm equipment? Or have you been dreaming of owning your slice of heaven out in the country? Look no further than Mississippi Land Bank for your financing needs. For more than 100 years, farming families and landowners in North Mississippi have turned to Mississippi Land Bank for all kinds of financial solutions, uh, whether it's land or equipment or livestock. For more information, visit mslandbank.com or go by and see one of their friendly staff at any of their offices. And as I often mention, they've helped friends of mine acquire some land and uh, they were terrific to work for. So reach out to Mississippi Land Bank. You'll be glad you did. So now let's shift gears and move over to Captain Ronnie Daniel. He's someone I enjoy having on the Ricky Matthews Show and Super Talk Outdoors. We haven't had him in a while, and the reason why, it's summertime, and they're out just about every single day catching fish. Ronnie, how you doing, my friend? Man, it's uh, it's been a good summer. I'm, I'm hot and I'm tired, but I'm happy that I'm that way. Yeah, that, what that means is no big storms coming to coastal Mississippi. We got the afternoon thunderstorm. When I'm talking about storms, I'm really talking about tropical systems of some sort. The salinity has been great. Uh, it's been relatively calm uh, most days. Um, that's what you need to see when you're charter boat business, isn't it? Absolutely. You know, May was uh, May was very volatile for us. We had a lot of wind. We had a lot of crazy wind. North wind, west wind, um, June kind of started leveling out. July has been pretty nice to us so far. Sorry, Ricky, you caught me on a Sunday afternoon. I got kids running through this house in the hey, background. That's no, I, don't, I don't even hear them, but if there were, that would be wonderful. I've got I've got them in the back as, as well. But listen, Ronnie, it's uh, it's been a good year. I was mentioning at the first part of the show that uh, Jordan has been out the last couple of days. To, to various spots along the barrier islands and speckled trout action has been really good. It has. We've had a great year for speckled trout. We've been seeing some big fish. We've been seeing good numbers. Um, the islands have been producing well for us. Grass beds look great. A lot of bait out there. One thing we've been seeing early this year, it seems early to me, is we're seeing a lot of menhaden pushing in a lot closer. Um, you know, we typically don't see that till sometime next month whenever they start pushing in shore. Um, a lot of bait out there. The the Bloxy Marsh has cleaned up and has been producing very well for us. I was there yesterday, speckled trout at every stop that we made. So happy to see the new size limits that Louisiana put in place and the Creole limit. Um, you know, we've probably got a got a year or two before these fish catch up to it. We're throwing a lot of fish back that would have been legal a few months ago, but it feels good every time we do. You know, it's a double-edged sword. Of course, clients want to keep them, but knowing that we're getting that many fish back in the water that we would have been killing four or five months ago, you know, they're going to spawn this year and things are just going to get better. Yeah, there we, we already know there's just incredible evidence that when you when you manage the 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 uh, resource, especially in this case speckled trout, well, the payback is dr dramatic, and let's hope it stays that way. Listen, you're talking about big fish; they caught several in the three pound range, and he said this morning he had a hit this morning on a topwater bait, and I mentioned it to, again this also at the beginning of the show, but. He said it was good. It may have been 10 pounds. It was just absolute giant. And he uh, said, instead of going in nose first, it w it was so big that it belly flopped on top of the, 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 uh, the top water. He said, it just, he, he just completely that. missed the, you know, missed it. I'm going to tell you those, those big ones like that, they just, they get burned into your brain. You know, I, I have been cursed. I have been all over the Gulf of Mexico. I've been to all the top big trout spots. I've had eight and a quarter caught with me. I've had seven and a half caught with me. Personally, I have never been able to break seven pounds. I've caught enough 6.8, 6.9s to fill my boat two times over probably. But the one time I know for a fact I had a seven plus, probably eight plus pound fish on the line. Line broke at the last second, but I can still see that fish in the look on my buddy's face standing next to me like it was yesterday and that was 25 years ago we had a place we had a place it's been um it's been a few years ago now that i think about it 
but one spot, one spot that every time you go to that one spot for about a month, you were going to catch a fish between six and eight pounds. Oh yeah. You might catch two. And, but then it's kind of slowed down. And then if you go back the next day, you're going to catch one between six and eight pounds. And we, we go back to that spot all the time, hoping that it's going to light back up again. And we'll catch one from time to time, but not that big. It's just, it's, you know what? They're so salinity focused. They're so clear water <laughs> focused. Everything just has to be perfect for you to have sort of a, a return, a repeat performance, doesn't it? Yeah, and, you know, whenever we start talking about big trout like that, they don't feed like smaller trout do. You start talking about these these big trout, five, six, seven-plus pounds, those fish are only feeding once, maybe twice a day. They're, they're yeah. eating big baits. It's a very limited window to get your opportunity with them. And uh, so, you know, it, that's that's not a deal where, where you go and you, you catch 20 of them, you know. Yeah, no. Hey, listen, you mentioned the Manhattan, and you've always preached this and others that are religious about fishing down here. If you follow the bait, you'll you the bait tells you where the fish are going to be. And and I'm, I I I just to come back to your point just a minute. In August and September, what you'll start seeing is a lot of Manhattan and back bay. You'll start you know, small ones, big ones, all different size. You'll see porpoises coming in. You'll see, you know, we call it a bull shark. And, you know, by the Pops Ferry Road Bridge last year. But you see a lot of saltwater species start to make. You, you will catch a, an occasional tarpon even. So what's interesting is that we went, okay, the last day of snapper season, which would have been uh, a week ago Saturday, I guess, a week ago Saturday, we went we went offshore. And on the way out, tons of manhaden everywhere. And so we got small ones. And then a little bit further, we got medium ones, you know, next time. And then we got a little bit further out, we found the pelicans, and we're able to get some big ones. So the live bait whale was loaded up. But that's not something you typically see early June. You know, June, I mean, excuse me, late June, early July. That's an August, September kind of thing. So, yeah, like I said, you know, it seems like that part of our fishery is a little ahead. You know, we felt like the trout and the shrimp were a little behind this year, you know two weeks to a month behind before we started seeing what we usually see. Um, the men have shown up. We're seeing glass minnows in the channel between Cat Island and, and the marsh, which, you know, that again, that's typically an August thing. But, hey, anytime we're seeing a, a, a multitude of bait, that that's a that's a win-win for everything around. Yeah. Hey, listen, uh, we had, we went and caught, uh, we got a limit of a red snapper, caught a bunch of mangrove. Mangrove's fun to catch up next to a rig, especially the big ones. Um, and while we were fishing, of course, we, we, we brought my brother-in-laws with us and we had a great King Mackerel run, man. I mean, King Kings were really there in force. That was a lot of fun. Um, when all these things are happening simultaneously and you're out just to put a little bit of meat in the box and have a good time, it the fishing is really good in coastal Mississippi right now. Man, I'm gonna tell you what, you talk about those mangrove snapper and one of my favorite snapper trips that I've ever had. We did very poorly on red snapper, but we ended up at a rig and those big mangroves were up. And we were taking we had some live croakers and we were taking those on our trout rides, just free line, pitching them up underneath the rig and hooking these big mangroves. I mean six, seven, eight pound mangroves. I broke like five hundred dollars worth of rides that day and i was laughing and giggling about it the whole time i, was, I had so much fun pitching those baits to those big mangroves yeah we usually use our big spinning reels for that and of course we use uh um uh, you know pretty heavy uh pretty heavy braided nylon but the the drag is absolutely <laughs> locked down completely yeah. Yeah, and, and and for people who've not catch, caught a mangrove, and maybe you've caught a bonita before, it's like trying to catch a ten pound bonita up next to the rig. It's these <laughs> a, a mangrove is violent. Yeah, it's violent, especially hitting that free line croaker. I mean, it was you know I love to feel a trout dump a croaker. This was like a train running that croaker <laughs> over, and then it was everything you could do if you could get them out of the leg. You had a chance. If not, you were in trouble. But it was so much fun. Hey, but Ronnie, for for a mangrove, um, the croaker is absolute bait number one. And the reason why 
is because they dive. As soon as you put them in the water, they go down, and they'll usually get through that first wave of mangroves and get down a little bit deeper to where the big ones are. And what, one of the things that we do, we, we do this literally almost every time. After we get done fishing, we'll, we'll drop down and, and put our snorkel equipment on and get our guns and go down under the water and kind of see a lay of the land. And after you thought you've, you're, you're thinking you caught them all, and you get down underneath that rig and look around, you realize, man, there's, a, there's some smart mangroves out there. I bet it didn't get caught. It's amazing. Hey, when we get on the other side, we'll have our final segment with Captain, Captain Ronnie Daniel. We'll see you after this. Welcome back to Super Talk Outdoors. Listen, no matter what you, what kind of hunting you're involved in, whether you're looking for 40 acres of, of land or 4,000, if you're looking to buy land, you need someone you can trust. He's a hunting land hunter. Call Lake Pickle at Open Season Properties. Call 601-750-2487. Now let's get back to my friend, Captain Ronnie Daniel. Hey, look, Ronnie, before we get any further, let's tell people about your guide service. Tell us, tell us a little bit more about what you do. In 2012, I decided to do what I'd always wanted to do. I wanted to fish for a living. So that, that, that was the start of Fisherman Guide Service. We now run a full service operation down here with access to multiple boats out of Pass Christian Harbor. Um, we do what's considered near shore, upper end of Louisiana Moore, Chandelier Islands, uh, Mississippi Sound, speckled trout, redfish, uh, triple tail, and flounder at night. The nighttime floundering trips are something a lot of people don't know about. We have lodging available. You can take your fish right upstairs, have them cooked. As soon as you come off the boat at Shaggy's restaurant, we even have, we can put golf packages together for you. We can really do anything that you want to do. And it all showcases the Mississippi Gulf Coast, which in my opinion, is one of the premier places on the Gulf of Mexico to be able to come and fish. Well, as we've discussed before with Rimmer Covington Jr., who owns Shaggy's, uh, what you and he collaborated around after Hurricane Zeta, which became the, the charter docks at Pass Christian Harbor, what's unique about it, first of all, it's just cool. You can get all the charter boat captains, especially the, the nearshore guys, all kind of hanging out together, their boats being right there together, being able to meet their various clients and watch them clean the fish and all that. But, uh, you know, if the women don't want to go fishing, they can drop their men off and then go, you know, walk downtown. The proximity to downtown and the other coastal cities, that's a special part of it. You know, as we talked about before, if you go down to Venice, you're just going to fish. But if you're coming yeah. to a place like Pass Christian Harbor, you can come and do it all. And the response to your vision around this has been absolutely incredible, hasn't it? Man, it has. You know, we've actually even won some awards, but, you know, Touching back to what you just said about the wives maybe not wanting to fish, or if you've got a bunch of kids with your wives that don't want to fish, we have another option for that as well. The guys want to go fishing. We've got a great captain down there, Captain Dan Whitman, and he specializes in sunset tours, dolphin tours, and island trips. You can send the wife and the kids to go hang out on the island with Captain Dan, or they can go dolphin watching while the guys go catch fish and everybody meets right back at the harbor and has lunch together or dinner together that evening. We've, we've really been able to put together kind of an all-inclusive deal right there. That's, that's such a good idea. That's a, it's such a good idea. But we were a family member uh, from, they live, they live, let's see where they live, outside of Tampa. And, uh, she, he's got, you know, they, they own a place in Biloxi as well. And then <laughs> she's got family uh, property in Mid Lake Michigan. And she was saying, you don't want to go see the, the Fort Massachusetts on ship Island. So I'm going to, I'm going to go on the ship Island, but we're like, what you're going to go. <laughs> we're going to take you, we're going to take you to ship Island. My goodness, this is a family member, but not, not envisioning that that's something we would enjoy doing, but we love to go to the islands, man. We, we do island trips all the time just to enjoy being out there. You know, I came in from fishing last weekend. My wife said, hey, let's take a boat ride. So we loaded the kids up, went right back to where I've been, you know, a lot of my days this year, right there in the Cat Island. Let them get out, walk the beach, look at uh, hermit crabs, look at the shells they could find, you know, just checking things out. There's, there's so much, you know, being on the water every day, I get very complacent about what we get to see every day, you know, and then I see 
like the class I had today, first dolphin that popped out of the water, or porpoise, you know, they, they're going nuts. You know, they, they love getting to see this. And that's one of my favorite parts about what we do is getting to introduce people to stuff that they might not otherwise see. Roseated spoonbills in the marsh, dolphins. Heck, they get excited whenever they see a big jellyfish float by the boat, you know, and we take that for granted, but it's really cool stuff for everybody. Well, Ronnie, one of the keys to success for you <laughs> has been being able to assess that the client of the day and being able to see it through their eyes so that you or make you know you make sure they don't miss something and th th there's an art to that in your business there, you know there is and but that's why I try to ask all my clients what what do you want what are you looking for <laughs> Had a guy on the phone hit me with a tall order today. He said, I want you to make my wife happy. I said, well, I can't make you any promises <laughs> about that. But we're going to try to put her on some fish. Um, <laughs> you know, and, and the people are one of my favorite parts about my job. I've met people literally from all over the world and certainly all over the United States. Hey, one thing we've got coming up over the next month or two, we've talked about the Menhaden moving in. It gets hot in August, it gets hot in September, and the trout bite does slow down, but the big schools of reds and jacks are going to come in, and that is a lot of fun. If you haven't ever seen these fish up top school and feeding on those big schools of bait, getting a pitch of bait into there and hook up to one of these brutes, it's a lot of fun. Look up Captain Ronnie Daniel. You'll be glad you did. Listen, uh, again, as I opened up the show, we're praying for former president donald trump and the others that were either killed or injured in the event we're praying for our country it's okay to acknowledge that we're sad and distressed over this but those of us in the outdoor community regardless of your political persuasion let's prove to people what it looks like let's show them what it looks like to be together god bless you and stay safe in the outdoors we'll see you next week